In the past, forests along the coast of Singapore were a common sight. Today, we're here at Labrador Nature Reserve, which is one of the last few coastal beach forests that you can visit on mainland Singapore. I'm Praline. And I'm Gervais. In this episode, we'll be giving you a closer look at a coastal forest and the various plants and animals that call this place home. But first, let's take a look at how Labrador Nature Reserve came to be and the rich history behind it. earliest records of Labrador Nature Reserve in history was that of a rocky outcrop that stood at the gateway of what is today Keppel Harbour. It was called Long Yaman or Dragon's Teeth Gate for centuries and sailors would use it as a navigational landmark until it was blown up by the British in 1848. What we see behind this today is a replica that was put up in 2005. How did the surrounding area came to be known as Keppel Harbour? It was first named New Harbour in 1819, when William Farquhar, who later became the first British resident and commandant of Singapore, first described the place to Sir Stamford Raffles, the man credited with the founding of modern Singapore. In 1900, the harbour was renamed in honour of Captain Henry Keppel of the British Royal Navy. He had helped clear the Straits of Singapore of pirates and was involved in the planning of the harbour's construction. In 1890, the British had already built a fort, and in the years leading up to World War II, they further strengthened the defences with heavy weaponry. Today, you can still see the remnants of Labrador Battery, which the National Heritage Board has gazetted as one of Singapore's World War II sites. And silently observing history unfold right here was Labrador Coastal Forest. Labrador Nature Reserve was first gazetted by the British in 1951 under the Old Nature Reserves Ordinance and more recently under the National Parks Act in 2002. Today, Labrador is home to 250 species of trees, 8 species of creepers and climbers, and 17 species of palms. So what exactly is a coastal forest? Well, as the name suggests, they are situated by the coast an easy way to tell them apart from mangrove forests is to take a look at the tree roots. Mangrove tree roots are often submerged below the water. In contrast, the roots of coastal trees are almost always high above the watermark. The trees of the coastal forests are sometimes precariously located on rocky cliffs or sandy shores and are often subjected to strong coastal winds. That's why they put down deep roots to anchor themselves and draw out water from deep underground. One example is the sea guta, which only grows up to slightly over 25 metres tall. One easy way to identify this tree species is by its coppery golden appearance due to the colour of the underside of its leaves. Other trees, like the casuarina, can grow up to 30 to 40 metres tall and have strong, solid trunks that can withstand the elements. Casuarinas are easily distinguishable from the trees surrounding them due to their delicate, needle-like twigs and distinctive cones. Because these cadrinas frequently encounter very strong winds, their crowns are asymmetrical. If you observe closely, the shape of the crown will reveal the most common wind direction, which in this case is that way. Coastal forests are natural barriers that protect our coastal communities and property against the elements. They greatly reduce the corrosion and damage which is caused by salt spray brought in by the strong winds and also help to protect our shorelines against coastal erosion. Now one tree you can see doing just that is here right behind me. This is the blunt leaf oil fruit tree or the Iliocarpus pedunculatus which belongs to the family of oil fruit trees. From here, you can see how its roots are holding the soil on the cliff together, therefore preventing the shoreline from further erosion. This tree species is also tolerant of salt spray that it encounters during high tides, compared to other tree species which may not fare so well. 
And here's a fun fact. Did you know that the blue colour of the fruit of this tree is actually an optical effect caused by the folded structure of the skin of this fruit? Birds eat the fruit and disperse its seeds in open areas where new trees will eventually take root. Many of the trees they can find in coastal forests are uniquely adapted to this environment, with some of them utilising the sea to disperse their fruits. One such example is the poison fish tree or Barringtonia asiatica. The poison fish tree produces fruits that can float on the sea for many months. This increases the likelihood that it will take root in different coastal areas. Similar to a coconut, it has a spongy middle layer, and the sacs of air within the fruit helps it to stay afloat. The tree actually derived its name from the use of its fruit as fish poison as the fruits and seeds contain the toxin saponin. Another common coastal native tree species that also disperses its fruit by water is the sea almon, also known as Terminella catapa. Like the poison fish tree, this tree has fruits that are filled with air on the inside due to its fibrous nature. This enables the fruit to float on water for many days as the exterior slowly rots away. The sea almon sheds its leaves about twice a year, which turn a bright red or yellow before they fall off. If you're an avid fish keeper, you might actually find these leaves really familiar. These leaves are added into aquariums to release tannins and humic acids, which causes fish to keep calm and promotes fish health. If you're here at the promenade area of Labrador Nature Reserve, do keep a lookout for the seashore mampari or Pongamia pinata, like the one behind me. If you're lucky, you can spot these fluffy flowers blooming at night. The blooms release really strong scent that attract nocturnal pollinators like bats and moths which feed on the nectar from its flowers. This tree is not only found near the coast, it has been planted along roadsides and in beach parks as well. Another tree you might encounter as you walk here is Podocarpus polystichus. Podocarpus polystichus, or sea tick as it is also called, is a critically endangered tree native to Singapore. It usually grows on rocky and sandy shores or along coastal cliffs. This particular individual beside me has been carefully grown and planted by Mparx to aid in the species recovery. What makes this tree so unique to me is that it is a coniferous tree. As you can see, the leaf blades of the tree are leathery and land-shaped. Photocarpus polystichus is a dioecious species, with male and female cones born on separate trees. After the female cones are pollinated and fertilised, the edible receptacle will turn red with a mature green seed. The seeds are then dispersed by birds, which feed on the receptacle. Coastal trees play an important role in the habitats that surround them. Leaves, flowers and fruits from these trees fall into the water and provide food for decomposers, which are an important part of the nutrient cycle. A study has even suggested that clown anemone fishes navigate their way to the coast where anemones are usually found using the smell of forest leaves in the water. The trees here are a source of food and shelter for many wildlife. Fruit bats and monkeys eat the husk of their fruits and help in dispersing their seeds. There is so much fruit and nectar here that you can find up to around 70 bird species and 30 butterfly species here at Labrador Nature Reserve alone. Coastal forests are truly an integral part of our ecosystem and it's amazing how coastal trees have adapted themselves to living in such challenging conditions. There's just so much to see here at Labrador Nature Reserve. So if you're up for an adventure, do come down for a visit. But be sure to adopt and observe the proper etiquettes when visiting our green spaces. Take nothing but photographs and leave nothing but footprints. Stay on designated trails and remember, cycling on the boardwalk is not allowed. The map box at the entrance to the Labrador Nature Reserve will show you the trails you can take and the do's and don'ts within the area. We hope you've enjoyed learning about coastal forests in our city in nature, and we hope to see you again soon.